Hey guys, Mike and Derek from Off-Road Solutions here, coming to you from Cybertron. When doing Toyota engine swaps into 79 to 95 Toyota truck and 4Runner models, there are some connections made that can seem a bit confusing. These connections are for the alternator, the battery, and the starter trigger. There are a few different ways to make these connections, and we hope to clarify these with this video. Here are the factors that determine how alternator and starter trigger connections are made. The year model of the recipient vehicle, which is your vehicle, the location of the battery, and battery cables that will be used. First we will give a brief overview of alternator and starter trigger wiring on both the donor engine and the recipient vehicle. On most Toyota donor engines that we deal with at ORS, what we call the battery cable harness is a separate wiring harness on the engine that houses the battery cables, the alternator wiring, and the starter trigger wiring. This is mounted to the engine and connects to the starter and alternator. On the other end, in the donor vehicle, this harness originally connected directly to the battery post and also to body wiring, normally via the fuse box. It is important to note that the donor fuse box will not be used in the swap. The recipient fuse box will be retained in its original location. This is an example of a donor battery cable harness um, without all the coverings on it just to kind of illustrate exactly its purpose here. Um, this is a 5VZ battery cable harness. Um, we'll start with the battery positive cable. It's going to connect to your battery positive terminal up here and actually runs down along through under your engine and back out to the starter post. Next is going to be your negative battery cable. It's going to connect at the battery post here, negative side, run down through and it actually exits here and terminates as a, at a bolt um, that bolts to the engine block. Next is going to be the starter trigger wire. This is down at the starter as well. Again, runs and follows the battery positive cable, but actually connects here with the alternator wiring and comes out to one of these square connectors, um, and that would have hooked up to the donor fuse box. Lastly, you got alternator wiring. You got your alternator donor alternator plug and alternator post wiring. The alternator post wiring comes up and comes to here. That will not be used. Your alternator wiring actually comes down loops around within the harness and comes out to this donor plug as well. We will detail that wiring here in the next segment. Here are some images of recipient vehicles. With the ORS conversion wiring, the OEM or original wiring will be retained in the recipient vehicle's engine bay, including the fuse box. Essentially, the OEM alternator circuit and wiring will be retained and connected to the donor alternator. The starter trigger will come from the ORS conversion wiring and will ultimately be connected to the starter in one of two ways. To get the engine swap operational, a few things need to be done. The battery cables will be connected to the battery, starter, and engine block. The starter trigger wire will be connected from the ORS conversion wiring to the starter. The recipient alternator circuit will be retained and connected to the donor alternator. Now we will illustrate how these things are accomplished. Battery cables need to be connected in the following way. The positive cable will connect the battery positive terminal to the post on the starter. The negative battery cable will connect the battery negative terminal to the engine block. A smaller cable is used to tie the battery negative terminal to the body ground. It is important to have one more small cable that connects the engine head to the firewall. This is normally done during the engine swap. If the battery is in the same location as the donor vehicle, it is best to use the battery cable harness from the donor vehicle or use the ORS battery cable harness. In this case, the battery cables are integrated and ready for connection. If the battery is in a different or remote location, build battery cables to suit the connections needed. In most cases, we recommend the positive cable should be 2 gauge or larger 
and the negative cable should be 6 gauge or larger. Longer cables for remote battery locations should be larger in gauge size. It is also important when building custom cables to include a small cable from the battery negative terminal to the body using a clean ground point on the body or chassis near the battery. As we stated earlier, the recipient fuse box will remain in its original location. There is a short cable coming from this recipient fuse box to the battery positive terminal. This will be extended and connected to the battery positive terminal in its new location. With the battery moved to the left hand side of the engine bay, we recommend the ORS fuse box cable extension, part number ORS-EC047. Simply cut the original eyelet and splice the end of the ORS fuse box cable extension to the original cable at the recipient fuse box. If the original cable has a small section of fusible link wire at the eyelet, also remove this fusible link section. Connect the other end of the ORS fuse box cable extension to the battery positive terminal using the eyelet. A fusible link is already pre-installed for safety. Route the ORS fuse box cable extension along the radiator support and secure to the original wiring. When the battery is relocated anywhere else in the vehicle, a similar extension can be built. The cable will splice at the recipient fuse box in the same manner, then routed to the battery positive. A fuse or fusible link will be installed at the battery positive terminal. We recommend 8 gauge cable with an 80 amp fuse or 6 gauge cable with a 100 amp fuse. Now it's starter trigger time. The ORS conversion wiring harness will have either a wire lead or a connector labeled two starter trigger wire terminal. This will be connected to the starter trigger terminal either directly or through the battery cable harness. If the ORS conversion wire harness contains a wire end labeled two starter trigger it will be connecting to the donor battery cable harness. It will be connecting here at this four pin connector at the black wire. It's typically black with a white stripe. The other end of that wire does actually travel down to the starter trigger connector. This is simply a convenient place to splice it in so it's routed nicely along the engine. This connector is no longer used in a conversion. It is simply cut off and discarded. The ORS starter trigger wire end from the conversion harness is simply spliced to this black wire. The same applies if using a new ORS battery cable harness. The only difference is there will no longer be a four wire connector to remove. You'll simply take the black starter trigger wire in the ORS battery cable harness and splice it directly to the black starter trigger wire in the ORS conversion wiring harness. With an ORS adapter harness, the intended routing for the starter trigger wire is from the right hand firewall area down the right hand inner fender in front of the radiator to the left hand battery area. Be sure to secure this starter trigger wire to the OEM wiring in the radiator support. With an ORS engine conversion harness, the intended routing for the starter trigger wire is down the left hand inner fender to the left hand battery area. When the battery is not in the left hand corner of the engine bay, the ORS conversion wiring will normally provide a connector for the starter trigger. Simply route this connection to the starter and plug directly into the starter trigger terminal. When routing this wire, be sure to secure wiring clear of the exhaust, sharp edges, or moving parts. In most cases, the alternator wiring circuit of the recipient or original vehicle will be retained. When using an OEM donor battery cable harness such as this one, there will be wrapping all along here. Essentially, this small section is your alternator wiring. It essentially is not used. 
It, this is the cable that used to go to the fuse box. It can be cut off here. This is the cable and the wiring that would go to the alternator. It can be cut wherever convenient. At times, depending on the year of your, of your vehicle, this three-wire donor plug may need to be cut and spliced into your wiring, so that is often retained. That said, the other end of this is in the four-wire connector here that we've already cut off. Those wire ends can also be cut down here. Again, this is not used. The alternator wiring will normally be done in one of two ways. If your original alternator connector will plug into the new alternator, simply plug the original alternator connector into the new donor alternator. If your original alternator connector will not plug into the new alternator, simply splice the donor alternator connector in place of the original alternator connector, matching wire color. In either case, simply connect the recipient or original alternator cable to the new donor alternator. In the case of older recipient vehicles that had an externally regulated alternator, or vehicles without existing alternator wiring, the charging and alternator circuit is simple and can be created using an alternator pigtail from the donor vehicle or ORS. Connections are made using the following wire colors. The yellow wire is optional. It is used to operate a charge lamp, warning the operator if the alternator quits charging. This will operate as a ground side signal. An indicator lamp would be wired with one wire to 12 volt ignition on power and the other wire to this yellow wire at the alternator. The red wire is connected to a 12 volt ignition on source only receiving power with the key or ignition switch on. This should be fused at 10 amp or 15 amp. The white wire is given battery power 12 volts at all times. This should be fused at 7.5 amps or 10 amps. For any further questions, please refer to the install instructions related to your conversion or email us at techsupport at offroadsolutions.com. We appreciate you watching our very classy video.